hey Larry. This is Andy Money! Reporting for Give Me Drivers Across America! <laughs> and uh, I'm her. I'm her. <laughs> Alright, so let's get to it! What do you use to fill those gaps when <laughs> welding the doors? Alright, so uh, <laughs> what I like to use is a little 5 16th rod and I put that around the door. 5 16 Just 5 16 wow. And uh, just weld that on there because Tacky doesn't do shit. It's incredible stuff, her. Yeah. It's incredible. That's okay. just me. Jack's hair. Some people like to use a uh, like quarter inch plating. That's amazing, her! I just like to use any kind of scraps I can find around the lumber yard, if you know what I'm saying, because I'm a cheap ass. And uh, speaking of cheap asses, old Jeff Krugel. That boy's dragging his feet. Oh, jeez, not Jeff Krugel again. Again. Ah! <laughs> you know, Krugel there, he's actually further along than Miles. He's got two cars, uh, but uh, he's not even sure if that old Zephyr's gonna even run. Jesus. Come on, let's go, you lazy asses. Let's get going. Let's get the shit going, huh? Oh, the ball, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank. Anyway, speaking of getting it going, let's go to the NDDR National Derby Driver Recognition. Thanks, JT. Thanks, sir. I'm Larry. And I'm Ethan. And, and this, this is NDDI. NDDR. This month, we would like to recognize Ron Alley. Better known as Captain Ron. Ron is from Napa, California, and has been a collision repair tech for about 15 years. Yeah, and the irony of that is, is that he's been derby in the 13 of those years. I wonder what the ratio is of cars that he's repaired to the cars that he has destroyed. Well, Larry, Ron participates in one to six derbies a year, so if you did the math, the maximum amount of cars he could have wrecked since he started derbying in 1996 would be 78, so hopefully he repairs more than 5.2 cars a year. Anyways, Ron is married and has a 15-year-old daughter who does all the painting on his derby cars. His favorite part of derby is a 61 to 69 Suicide Lincoln. Which I absolutely love those cars. Ron normally chooses the derbies he participates in at the last minute. That's right, Larry. But one thing for sure, he will be participating in his hometown derby in Napa, August 15th and 16th. Good luck to you, Ron. Back in 2002, Ron and Scott Grisby, aka Junker Nuts, started the West Coast Derby Gallery on Yahoo Groups. As the group grew, they added a photo bank to the MySpace page. Their latest addition to the WCDG is a sudden launch board Ron started up with Kim Cornwell. Go check it out at westcoastdd.suddenlaunch.com. We asked Ron if he had any advice for the rookies, and he said don't worry about doing what it takes to win. Just go out there, have fun, and enjoy yourself. Good advice, Ron. And on behalf of the Booze Brothers, good luck, and keep doing it West Coast style. Back to you guys. Build, Build that, that derby car. car. <laughs> wow, the great face! <laughs> that Captain Ron dude is everywhere. Sounds like a hell of a man. Hell of a man. So, derby driver safety is something that every driver needs to think about, sometimes overlooked by your typical rookie. I don't think it's just rookies, you know, veterans, they kind of, they overlook that stuff also. I'm telling you what, those who think that this two by two inch square steel tube is adequate for an impact cage might want to think again. Well, I think, I think actually it works all right for minis. But if you're doing like a V8 class, what I can use is like a uh, two by six, you know, quarter inch. Oh, thing. we have one right here. Imagine that. Holy crap. Whoa, Craig Randy. Yeah. Thanks, man. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh. This is a uh, two by six. Yeah. Yeah. It's good as deal. All right. Hey, very, very heavy. Uh, very nice. Oh, nice. That's great. Yeah. All right, Randy. All right. All right. All right. All right. Craig Randy. Thanks, man. Yeah, good job. Hey, uh, this damn beam. Tell your mama said hi. Yeah. That'll make some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I beams and C channel also work great. That's right. So, uh, hey, money, what do you think? Fire extinguisher or no fire extinguisher? Well, that's a tough one. I like to use one just in case, but I usually just like to leave it up to professionals. There's different sizes you can use, and it really depends on your personal preference. Oh, okay. Thank you. Whoa, Randy, Randy, whoa, holy shit. Okay, normally I would say this one is uh, great. Puts out a lot of fires, but this is too big. Too big. Too cumbersome. You can't grab it with one hand. You're in a derby car, you're on fire. What are you gonna do? Too big, too heavy, too heavy. Now this one, 
Thanks, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, because you can grab it. One hand, it's a one hand deal. You're driving, your dash, you know, everything's ablaze. Uh, this could get you out of a sticky situation really fast. All right now, and also with this one, what, if you got like a bench seat, uh, what a good thing to do is actually just cut a little section out of it, and you can put that bad boy like right there, ready to go, secure it in there, you're good to go. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> okay, this, this to me, this, this looks like a giant bottle of hot sauce or something. Uh, you know, maybe if your steering wheel's on fire, that's one thing, you know, or your seatbelt, but uh, other than that, uh, too small. This is not gonna save your ass. Bottom line, get your ass out of the car. Right. Get your ass out of the car. A DOT helmet. <laughs> Department of Transportation certified helmet, okay? <laughs> Eye protection. Something for your eyes. It's just gonna go flying. And a good pair of gloves. Nice. Be careful out here, okay? All right. Must have. <laughs> or they're not gonna let you drive. Period. Make sure that you also secure all your wiring and fuel lines because you want you don't want a chance of you know shorting out or any you know a fire obviously or getting pinched off. That's the neighbor. I hate getting pinched off. Speaking of getting pinched off, let's go to that little turd Mike and see what he's up to. Mike. Hey JT, what's going on Herb? Today I'm gonna install that fuel tank I had purchased from Eminem Boys Demo Products. So check it out. First thing I gotta do is make some brackets and weld them in place. Then I'm gonna put the tank in and run all my hoses. If all goes well, we'll fire it up uh, right here on this episode. So I welded these brackets in place for the tank. Now I'm just gonna drop that tank right on top of there and bolt it down. Securing your fuel lines is very important. So I got the lines all ran, securely fastened, and go through the firewall there. Don't worry, I am going to fix that hole so I don't have to worry about anything getting cut or pinched off as you'd say. Well. Let's see if it works. I've already primed the lines and everything, and uh, it should fire right up. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, that's right. Mike wanted to help this guy out, so he sent him an electric fuel pump for free. Free! 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 And so basically what happened is one of Derek's friends said, um, you, you can't use that. So you know what they did? What they do? Nothing! They didn't use it. They didn't use it? Went ahead and used the original tank. You gonna send it back? What? Who can use it? Well guess what, Derek? We use, use the same fuel pump on many a fuel injection car to work just fine. So you tell your friend, he's wrong. They wrong. It's that simple. That simple. All right, money. So I think it's time for us to get the hell out of here. Effiné, Herb. Effiné. <laughs> well, hey, uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, build that dirty car. <laughs> <laughs>